Hello and welcome one and all to the 100th episode of Lights Out, your very own virtual campfire. I'm your hostess with the mostest ghosties, Sylvia Schultz. I'm posting this episode on July 3rd, 2021, the anniversary of the third day of the Battle of Gettysburg and of Pickett's Charge, the turning point of the Civil War. Thank you so much for joining me as we go Lights Out. The Battle of Gettysburg fought over three grueling days from July 1st to July 3rd, 1863, was the greatest battle of the war. In the last days of June, General Robert E. Lee, commanding the 75,000-man Army of Northern Virginia, learned that 95,000 Union troops commanded by Major General George Meade were close by Lee's position. In July 1863, there were only about 2,400 people living in the small town of Gettysburg. But the town sat at the center of a network of ten important roads. The fighting began with skirmishes on July 1st, and during the night, reinforcements for both armies arrived. At four in the afternoon on July 2nd, General John Bell Hood's Confederates entrenched themselves in Devil's Den and headed up the rocky slopes of Little Round Top. The Union Army held the heights, and the day ended with attacks and counterattacks at Culp's Hill. When July 3rd dawned, the Confederate Army renewed their attacks, hoping to overrun the Union lines. Fresh troops, 1,500 of them, under the command of Longstreet and Pickett, rallied underneath the Confederate battle flag. Cannon fire pounded across the field for hours until the Union guns fell silent. Two mighty armies faced each other, watchful, waiting. Deciding that the Union guns had stopped because they were out of ammunition, the Confederates threw their all into Pickett's charge. Thousands upon thousands of men in ragged gray and butternut brown thundered across the battlefield, heading for glory. But the Union cannons had plenty of firepower left. Southern soldiers fell like blades of grass under a mower when the cannons roared to life. The Confederate Army reached the high water mark, the northernmost point of their march into Union territory, then were turned back with cannonball and bayonet point and bullet. General Lee sat astride his horse traveler as the Confederates straggled from the battlefield. He wept and apologized to his faithful soldiers. A plaque at the starting point of Pickett's Charge near Cemetery Ridge describes the dashing of Southern hopes for victory. As the Confederates streamed back across the fields from their failed assault, General Robert E. Lee rode out to meet them. It has been all my fault, he was heard to say. The attack had cost his army nearly 6,000 casualties. With the failure of Pickett's charge, Lee sensed his opportunity was gone. His men were exhausted, and the number of dead, wounded, and missing was enormous. They could no longer take the offensive. The following day, July 4th, Lee's men held their position on the ridge behind you, but the Federals did not attack. That evening, Lee gave the order to retreat. The retreat began in a heavy rain that soaked the downcast southern troops. The high spirits that had carried them into Pennsylvania were dashed on the bloody, sodden fields of Gettysburg. Lieutenant Thomas C. Holland commanded Company G, 28th Virginia Infantry. Shouting, come on, boys, Holland broke through the Union line on Cemetery Ridge. He fell moments later when a bullet pierced his cheek and exited the back of his head. He was carried to a Union field hospital and later recovered. Of the 88 men in Holland's company who took part in Pickett's charge, 81 were listed as killed, wounded, or missing that night. Fifty years after the battle, Holland returned to the spot where he fell and shook the hand of the Union soldier who had shot him. Around 
Around midnight on July 3rd, a New Englander, Private John Haley of Maine, was on picket duty near Cemetery Ridge. He recorded his thoughts in his journal. The dead lay everywhere, and although not half a day has passed since they died, the stench is so great that we can neither eat nor drink nor sleep. Decomposition commences as soon as life is extinct. The dead are frightfully smashed, which is not to be wondered at when we consider how they crowded up onto our guns a mass of humanity only to be hurled back an indistinguishable pile of mutilated flesh rolling and writhing in death. No tongue can depict the carnage, and I cannot make it seem real. Men's heads blown off or split open, horrible gashes cut, some split from the top of the head to the extremities as butchers split beef. Another journal keeper, James F. Clark, mused on the personal aspect of the dead Confederates he saw after Pickett's charge. To us, these men are only rebels, but each of them had a home, mother, wife, children. They look out of their cabin window and say, when will he come back? The little children say, when will Papa come back? And what will he bring me? Poor, desolated homes, south as well as north. All of this intense emotion and the sheer carnage of the Battle of Gettysburg has led to the site of Pickett's charge being one of the hot spots on the battlefield. John Kachuba, in his book Embedded with the Paranormal Paramilitary, told a story that had been shared with him by a reenactor. Susan Carpenter is a member of the Soldiers' Benevolence Society, civilian reenactors associated with the 26th Regiment North Carolina troops. During a visit to Gettysburg, she and a few others from her group decided to walk the path taken by troops under Confederate Major General George Pickett as they charged Union positions along Cemetery Ridge. The group started at the stone wall upon the ridge, at the point known as the High Water Mark, and walked the path back to where the ill-fated charge had begun. As soon as I stepped out on the path, Susan said, I could feel the cold coming up from the ground. I began to feel my neck starting to prickle, and my feet and legs were cold. Then I began to hear the moaning and smell the blood, and when I looked down there was nowhere to step because there were dead and dying men everywhere. It was really real, but I just kept on walking and saying, I am sorry. I am so sorry, in my head. When we got to the other side and turned to go back, suddenly they were gone. The ground was clear, and no one was lying there. But walking back across, I could feel them breathing behind me. It was very strange. When I visited Gettysburg in 2020, one of the places we intended to investigate, not just visit, was the high water mark, the end point of Pickett's charge. In order to get the most out of my experience there, I went all out with my preparations. First, I dressed the part. I had worn a pink day dress at Devil's Den, but for my visit to Pickett's charge, I decided to go a little fancier, and I wore my Civil War ball gown, cream-colored cotton printed with sprigs of pink nosegays tied with blue ribbon, with a blue ribbon at the waist and wide lace at the bodice. Those of you who are listening to this as a podcast, trust me, it's a gorgeous gown. And those of you who are watching this on YouTube, here's a picture of me in the gown. Yes, I am wearing my lucky ghost hunting t-shirt under the bodice, which I will admit somewhat detracts from the fashion statement I was going for. But hey, there are not a lot of places to change your clothes on a battlefield. I simply put the gown on over my t-shirt and shorts. That's why I look like a dork. 
In a bid for more authenticity, I brought even more to entice the spirits to visit with me. At the angle where the Union troops held their defensive position, I offered the soldiers tobacco. That being a southern product, it was in short supply in the north. And further down in the field, where I thought I'd be likely to encounter Confederate spirits, I set out coffee. Again, this was something that was scarce in the South during wartime. And sagamite. Sagamite was a Confederate army food, designed to be portable and filling, much like hardtack. Sagamite is cornmeal moistened with oil and molasses, then cooked in patties until it holds its shape. The Confederates got sick of it after a while, but personally, I like the taste. I offered cool, fresh water to both sides, and had the music each army would be familiar with. I was ready. Pickets charge the field in front of the angle. Sunday, August 7th, 2020. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to speak with a lady? Does anyone need any help? Are you wounded? Are you thirsty? I have water here and sagamite. Would you like some water? Anyone like some sagamite? I have some here. It's good. I baked it not too long ago. I'll put it right there for you. And here's some water as well. Would you like some water? I'll bet you're thirsty. Good fresh water, too. Is there anyone here with me? It's wonderful. Would you like to come closer? Would you like some water? I have fresh water here. Would you like some? Come closer, please. The water's right in this tin cup. You can have some if you'd like.
You know what else I have? I have some coffee. If you'd like some coffee, please come closer. If you come closer to me, this black box that I'm holding in my hand will light up. And I'll know that you want coffee. Anything good? Made me feel good. I don't know if I captured anything. Are there any Union soldiers here who would like to come and speak with me? I know it's hot and you're scared and you've been fighting for hours. I have some nice fresh clear water for you. Would you like some? It's in this cup that I'm holding in my left hand. If you'd like some, please come closer. I'm holding a black box in my right hand. I can't see you, but if you come closer to me, this box will light up. And that's how I'll know that you need some water. My name is Sylvia. Can you tell me your name? There's a lull in the battle now. Would you like some tobacco? I've got lovely Virginia tobacco here. I'll put it here on this rock and you can take as much as you like. I put water and tobacco there on that rock for you. You can have some if you'd like. Come on over and set the spell. Tell me your name if you're so inclined. And over there I put a tin cup of water oh, yeah. and some tobacco. Yeah. And out there in the field to the Confederates I offered sagamite and coffee and water. Cool. That's awesome. Oh. And I set down the water and the tobacco and a recorder and a K2 meter, and I got a couple of blips on the K2 after I backed three feet away from it. Gotcha. That's cool. Yeah, that's nice.
Alright, so they're they're little about the size of ginger snap cookies, so if you want to reach in there and oh, sure. oh, go ahead, uh, Barb. Go ahead. And if whatever you don't want, put on the rocks or mm. tell the tell the Rebs you're gonna give them some sagamite. Mm. Mm. I like it. They got tired of it. Mm. But uh mm. I like mm. it. Yeah, it's not bad. Did you look up at the stars last night? And think of your sweetheart. Wondering what was going to happen in the battle the next day. It's an awfully fine night to be out. I've got some fresh sagamite here. And I've got some good coffee with sugar in it. There's the sagamite. Would you like some coffee? With sugar? It's right here. I'll swirl it so the sugar's all dissolved in the coffee. And here it is for you. Is there anything you'd like to tell me? Can you tell me the name of your sweetheart? Do you remember what happened here in 1863? Some of it looks about the same. Do you remember your mother's name? Can you tell me her name? Can you tell me your name and where you're from?
If you'd like to come up to me, I've got coffee. Just gave your fellows some coffee. Is there anyone here with me? Would you like to tell me your name and what state you're from? Do you have a dog at home? What's your dog's name? If you'd like to, you can use this box here that I have in my hand to talk to me. Can you tell me where you're from? How about if I walk along and we'll talk together? Would you like to have your picture taken? If you let me take your picture, I'll send it to your sweetheart. Would you like to come over and have your picture taken? Stand in front of me, please. Are you ready? One, two, three. I hope you let me take your picture. Going to leave soon. If there's anything you'd like to say to me, please say it. Thank you for talking with me. Would you like to hear some more music? Well, I just played a couple of songs for you. Did you enjoy that?
I'll go a little farther down here. Play some more music for you. Well, that's some spirited music, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed that. I'll probably have to leave soon, but thank you for passing a spell with me. I hope you've come up and talked to me. I can't see you. Can you see me? I dressed up just for you. I hope you like the dress I'm wearing. I put it on just for you. If you'd like to walk back up to the wall with me, that's where I'm going. I really do hope you've chatted with me. I know you southern gentlemen are very courtly and have respect for the ladies around you and I hope you have come and talked with me. Good night. I want to thank each and every one of you out there in Electron Land for following me on this journey to episode 100 of Lights Out. You guys have listened to my podcast and watched the videos, and I am so pleased to be able to share these stories with you. Pleased and very, very lucky. If you enjoyed this visit to Gettysburg, please like and subscribe. Check out some of the other videos, too, and hit that like button as many times as you want. The stories will keep coming, too. In upcoming videos, we'll visit places like Waverly and Penhurst and make a return visit to the splendidly haunted Malvern Manor. In the next episode, we'll hear the strange tale of the Watsika Wonder. Thanks for listening as we continue to go Lights Out. <laughs>